Okay, Pranup, well, thank you very much for tuning in tonight. Uh, we're back from our first break, and uh, if you missed the first part of the segment or tuned in late, um, we're talking about uh, continuation of the disaster preparedness, and then I'm really focusing on this Ebola outbreak because I think it has the potential to be a very, very serious uh, threat, and uh, I'm hoping and praying that it's not, but you as the public need to be prepared uh, in case that it is. And I think that um, one of the things I didn't talk about in the first segment of the show was the fact that um, one of the things that Ebola does not do well in is an, an ultraviolet radiation or sunshine. Um, that's why the uh, African rainforest uh, is a good place for this virus to exist. Sunlight or UV radiation destroys a virus very rapidly. Um, thus, we, in this particular area, because of the amount of, of sunshine, we're in a very good place. However, um, where we are in trouble is because we live to an area where there are a lot of transient people and coming um, into from different areas of the country. Um, and it makes Vegas, and because of the number of people that work in the casino, it does make it a little more of a riskier area. Um, but remember that ultraviolet radiation is 4% stronger per thousand feet. Um, so we're about 2,500 uh, square uh, altitude feet here. So the ultraviolet radiation against the fact that we don't have any clouds uh, is still about 10% stronger um, because of the altitude we're at than if you were at sea level. Um, if there were to be an outbreak in the United States, uh, areas that are along the south where it is more humid and more, uh, more foliage will probably have a harder time um, should there be um, uh, an unfortunate issue. Um, the other the reason why I keep talking about this is that um, I saw an article uh, and I read um, where it showed the number of flights that were coming out of that particular area into the United States and it was 6,000 passenger flights per week. Um, so, uh, and I can tell you that this long incubation period means that there's a potential for people to slip through uh, the cracks and, and bring their unfortunate illness to here. Um, that is why I'm surprised our government has not restricted flights or at least set up an incubation period or a quarantine area for people that are, want to leave that country. Um, and um, I think that's the minimum we should do uh, uh, to protect the citizens of this country. Ebola has not been a virus that's been here. Um, and I'm ashamed of our government uh, for allowing um, this uh, to, to happen. It's almost as if I believe they want this to happen for some strange reason, and I can't figure out what that is. Um, and if they didn't want it to happen, they would have taken steps immediately to shut down flights. Other countries have. Um, and trust me, during the winter months, we can barely handle the colds and flus and what they do to our aging population, much less an outbreak of this. Uh, um, this has the potential, again, to, as we talked about, wipe out 40 to 50 percent of the population if a epidemic were to uh, outbreak, even though the CDC assures us that it's not. Um, how many times has the government told you things and it not be correct only to pacify you uh, into that? So knowing that, one of the things, again, you can do to help protect yourself from this virus, since there is no cure, uh, is to build up your immune system. Um, and that, in, again, requires you to eat correctly um, and get a good amounts of rest, uh, help break some of the maybe alcohol, some of the smoking, um, some of the things you do that drag you down. Um, pick your head up out of the phone, you know, pay attention to what's going on in the world around you. Um, you may need to think about avoiding uh, crowded places. You may think about avoiding people um, that look ill. Um, you may want to buy some masks when you're out in public uh, and limit your public exposure um, during, during this thing. Remember what I talked about using um, the hand cleaners and using them on the palms of your hands so that you don't um, affect that. Be careful not to touch uh, your face. Um, if you have this, this virus cannot get through your skin. It has to get into a mucosal 
area, meaning if you touch your face, if you touch your eyes, your mouth, uh, um, things of that nature, that is a higher incidence of potentially becoming infected. Um, so uh, one of the things I wanted to go into were the signs and symptoms of, of Ebola and maybe uh, a little bit of uh, uh, talk about the uh, potential for medications that might help alter it. Um, Ebola, because it's an RNA virus and is a very primitive virus, um, it basically causes um, a severe breakdown of all of your collagen and internal organs. It's basically something out of a horror movie. It's a host. It basically infects people and then takes over their body and it replicates its virus. It's just what it's supposed to do. It, it, and by doing that, it overwhelms our body. Um, it's basically stated that Ebola creates an HIV-like illness within five days, and normally HIV takes uh, years to come to its full uh, fruition. Um, and HIV, as you know, is a pretty serious uh, illness, and uh, this is uh, HIV combined into a week, and that's how deadly this uh, disease is. But what it does is it basically liquefies your internal organs. Um, they basically break down, the collagen breaks down, your liver breaks down, your intestines shed. Um, they've even reports of tongues being shed, which is a very painful condition. Um, you will vomit uh, blood, you will, you, know, you will have blood everywhere, you will bleed from your gums. Um, and people that have reported to, uh, you bleed into your brain, um, you almost bleed from every area in the late stages of the virus. Um, and they say that people who are infected with this basically can go into either psychosis, um, but they usually develop this incredible blank affect. Um, they have no emotion. Um, their eyes will be red from bleeding into their eyes. They may you know, bleed from their nose. Um, it creates really, if you think about it, a lot of what you've seen in movies, almost like a zombie like appearance. Um, so those that joke about the zombie apocalypse and things of that nature, um, you're really getting into something that could potentially be that way. Um, so, um, and again, going back to uh, the slide, you know, uh, again reiterating that uh, they thought they were going to have a vaccine by 2000, November 2014. Um, what I've heard is 2015 or later. Um, there is no deal. Now, I mentioned these two drugs at the bottom, amiodarone, which is a drug um, that is used to fight ant uh, arrhythmias. Um, uh, this is not a drug I recommend you taking um, because anti-arrhythmic drugs that fight arrhythmias in the heart can actually cause arrhythmias too. Uh, Clomid is a medication, um, again, that supposedly in mice had an 80% uh, effectiveness in blocking cells uh, for from Ebola. Um, this was a mice and there's no human replication. There have been obviously no studies to be done. There isn't a control population that you can give a medication to and see if they're, they're going to be infected or not infected. Clomid is a pregnancy drug. Um, increases FSH, LH in males. It increases testosterone production in lytic cells. So um, again, I would seek out your provider to discuss the risk and benefits of this even though um, this is not a cure and uh, basically it changes supposedly the theory is it changes some of the cellular structure to prevent the virus from getting into the cells if the virus cannot penetrate into your cells then it can't be replicated and therefore it does not uh, create its illness so um, this is true for all viruses even the herpes virus um, there are some people that are exposed to herpes. Uh, you may kiss somebody with a cold sore, but if you don't have the receptors for the virus, then you won't get the virus. Um, and so uh, with that, um, this, this changing this, and what they gave people in the treatment centers was a drug called ZMAP, or basically I think it was a monoclonal antibody, and what it did was just attack um, some of the virus particles uh, and uh, rendered them inactive, and that's how uh, people were able to survive because it gave our immune system a chance to respond to that. So with that in mind, um, 
if your immune system, this is why the virus is so potentially dangerous because it, it, it breaks down your immune system. So your immune system can never have a chance to build antibodies uh, and they get these antibodies from um, people that have survived. Uh, there is one other slide, if we could go back to that really quick. Um, oh, um, let me see if I can get back to that. Uh, again, I want to reiterate the, um, uh, the two strains, uh, the Sudan strain, which if you missed the first segment, um, that's the one that's currently out there, about a 50% uh, death rate. The Zaire strain being a slate wiper, um, it usually kills everybody. It comes in contact 90%. Um, and I think that pretty much goes over the slides uh, that I wanted to talk about. When we come back from the break, um, I hope to have a few diagrams so that we can uh, talk a little bit about open enrollment. Um, that's coming up and that's on a lighter note. Uh, talk a little bit about the uh, benefits to uh, each particular plan, the way I understand them, um, and a lot of things that people don't tell you. There's a lot of marketing that goes on um, during this particular time of the year. Uh, what does open enrollment mean? Uh, what does it mean to you? And how do you best find um, uh, the health plan for you? So after we come back from the break, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Again, Prompt, thank you for tuning in.